This episode was brought to you by Slate Black Industries. For M-Lock grips and accessories, visit slateblackindustries.com. Packed. Neutralized. All right, two hundred. Impact. Impact. All right, two fifty. Impact. Impact. All right, on a three hundred. Impact, left half. That one sailed a bit. I think that came over in over the top. Impact. All right, 350. So now I'm aiming to on the right half of the plate. Uh-huh. So 350 yards. I was using a 350 meters and I think I was pushing it a little too high on the, on the reticle because this is a meter reticle. Oh, okay. So that was on me. So okay. we're on 350? 350. I could follow the trace right in there, but I didn't see any movement. Impact for sure that time. I, I, I'm pretty sure that first one was a hit. If it wasn't, Henry, it was right off the you right edge. You want to just edge. do Perfect another one elevation. for safety's sake? Yeah, go ahead. Send one more. I think you're off the right. Oh. Okay, that's strange. All right, so I was aiming on the right half of the plate. I'll, I'll aim towards the middle of the plate then. Impact. There's no movement, like that didn't move at all. Whoa. You didn't hear the audio, audible I heard return? It. I heard it was a loud clink. Yeah, if you didn't hear that, there, you wouldn't have known that it was an impact. Now, here's the debate on some of these things. The Beretta ARX was made in 2004. Around uh, right after uh, 97 when the Germans adopted the Bundeswehr. So the lightness of a rifle was very much in play for uh, developing these things. I like it a lot for how light it is, but it does have a pencil barrel and some people don't prefer that. I, I actually don't mind the pencil barrel myself. All right, 400. All right, so that last one I, I aimed at the middle. So windage, I aimed at the middle and it seemed to hit. So shall I do that? Yeah, give it a go. I mean, it feels like we've got like the wind shifting from our six o'clock to like our four o'clock and yeah. back and forth. Looked like that one was off the right side. Okay, I'll aim on the left edge. Impact. One more. That was high over the bar. Impact. Okay. The trigger on this is quite heavy. You remember the G36? Mm. It's somewhere between the G36's trigger and the AUG's trigger on this one. Mm. It's a heavy polymer feeling. It feels like a glove trigger. Uh, gross. All right, 450. I'm going to use a 400 meter um, hash. Yeah, it should be good. And I'm going to hold center just a little bit to the left to see where it lands, okay? All right. Dead on. Okay. That looked like it might have been off the right side a touch high. Yeah, definitely high on these those last two shots. That one was up at the bar. Good windage though. Okay. Impact. Okay. That's strange. I was using the 400 meter and I was holding at the base of it. Well, I mean, your first shot was a dead on center hit. 
I'm at the 500. Impact. Impact. Nice. Good finish there at the end. Yeah. So, I think something I have to demonstrate right here in the field, the ambidextrous capabilities of this. So the AUG, you could change things in the field, kind of. The foul, you could change things in the field. This is truly a toolless switch between left and right. So I'll show you later on how the charging handle can change, but with a project, with a bullet, on the back there's a hole. Click that hole right there. And then our next shots. Watch this. Do you see that? Brass to the left. Yeah. Kind of cool, huh? Yeah. And then if I take a projectile out again and I click it on this end. Watch this. Brass to the right. Nice. Pretty cool system. Nice. All right. Let's head over to the debrief. Yep. We'll see you guys over there. All right. So it's an easy to maintain rifle. It's a lightweight rifle. I think it's cool. I mean, it uses 90s to or mid 2000s design and, and manufacturing techniques to make. I mean, mm -hmm. You could see that on the design end, it was not cheap for Beretta to, to design. Right. I just, honestly, I just wish the trigger was not so stiff. Yeah, I mean, it seemed it was okay. Like, we shot, the run was fine. You know, one of the things that we talked about on the run was um, the pencil barrel. Uh-huh. And how that, you know, whether or not that would come into play shooting the number of rounds we did, which was, what, 30, sub 30? I, I don't think it, it, it didn't go to 30. Right, so sub 30 rounds, yeah. right? So... You know, it, that's probably not enough rounds to get the barrel hot enough to really see any sort of strain to be. Yeah, but with, still, but... I didn't see any degradation in accuracy. No, no, I'm. That's what I'm saying. I don't. I wouldn't expect it yeah. to have degraded even with the pencil barrel, quote unquote, in that few of rounds. But honestly, though, my the thing that really impressed me was how I screwed around with it and pulled the barrel out before the run. And then it was fine, anyways. Right. And yes, it just retained zero. Yeah. So. Let's talk a little bit about the optic selection. I mean, this is the ACOG, and it's one the one with the uh, the ACS Aurora reticle. Yep. Um, um, I mean, the, it's it's made for five five six, so it's quite easy. It's quite easy for me to predict where they land. Yeah. And uh, you know, one of the things that we, you and I, were talking about about was whether or not we trued the optic or not. Just to go into a little bit more depth for some of the viewers on that. Normally, when you are zeroing a rifle with any sort of a BDC or mm -hmm. any sort of a any sort of a reticle in it, like the ACSS, which has you know, gradiated distance markers. After you take the hundred yard zero, generally the best practice is to to take that rifle and shoot it at three or four hundred yards and mm -hmm. confirm with the crosshair setting. Correct. At three to four hundred. Right. Correct. Correct. So using the appropriate uh, hash marker designation. Mm -hmm and evaluate whether or not the elevation, not the windage, because wind is obviously going to be a, yeah. an environmental factor, but whether or not the elevation is hitting where that hash mark says it should be hitting. And then making any fine-tuned adjustments, truing the zero at that distance. And the reason behind that is because when you're shooting a group up close, you can get what appears to be a good zero, mm -hmm. but is actually off by a half an inch or a third of an inch, which, although that sounds very insignificant, as you press that out to distance, it begins to stack. I think the, the, one, the one issue that we do see stateside, though, I would wager to say 99.9% .9 or 95% plus people typically shoot at a 100-yard range. Mm -hmm don't have access to anything greater than 100 yeah, yard agreed. range. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, agreed. And so truing an optic is actually not easy. Uh, agreed. Yeah, you definitely have to have access to the facility. However, if you don't if you are unable to true the optic, it took me what, uh, maybe one or two misses and I was to on target. It yep. So it's not that far off even if you can't Oh, true correct. An optic. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yep. What do you think about it just on your first handling? So first handling. 
So I would say it is light. Mm -hmm. With it having the reduced length handguard is immediately something that, like, I'm not a fan of because I like to take a, a grip that's further out on the gun. Mid-2000s Right, design. right. It's a very cool-looking gun. It's a very futuristic, modern yeah, the tactical looking tuna. gun. Yeah, right? It, it, it just, it, it does. It carries with it that... Um, I mean that persona again. It's it falls into what appears to be like the space age yeah. looking firearms. Yeah, the um, I mean FN had the FS two thousand. They had the Scar. Mm -hmm. H and K had the G thirty six. The Beretta uh, Italians had the ARX. Right. Um, I always feel like the ARX is is one of those that's that's being uh, that's the underdog. It, people don't really look at it very often. Uh, as far as all those rifles, I think the Beretta ARX is the best on on ambidextrous capabilities. Mm -hmm. The entire rifle can be disassembled and then reassembled to work on the other side with zero tools outside of the cartridges it, it, itself. Well, it certainly but, makes it it certainly makes it much more uh, cross user serviceable. Yeah. Whether or not cross-user serviceability is relevant for you is a different thing altogether, mm -hmm. but it certainly does uh, now, position itself in such a way where its advantage is in that area. Can I handle this real quick? I can SBR this without any tools, actually. Yes, because now I pull the bolts back. Right here, this is the barrel release. And the entire barrel assembly comes out. And I've taken that off after zeroing it. It holds zero. Mm. So, so all right. So, definitely in terms of user serviceability and, and individual setup being ideal for a specific user, this rifle does it better than pretty much all of the other ones out there in terms of just how mm -hmm. quickly and easily you can do it all toolless. The Tactical Tuna performed... Yeah, I mean it was a good run. Yeah, it was a good run for sure. I I would I would depend my life on something like this. Um, it would not be my first choice. However, these actually sell. I mean, for a rifle that was designed in the same the Scar, uh, sixteen pedigree. Yeah, it is significantly cheaper than something like the Scar sixteen. Right, or the I mean the FS two thousand mm -hmm. are super expensive, right? Aren't those yeah. like several thousand dollars? No, I think it's like two thousand, yeah. like seventeen hundred, two thousand. Two thousand, which this is half that price. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, I would also I would depend my life on this over an FS two thousand. Mm. Um, it's a lightweight non AR type rifle with awesome ambidextrous capabilities. The thing is, though, for the civilian market, I mean, how often are you going to buy something based on its ambidextrability? Yeah, probably not. Never. Yeah, probably not. I mean, why are you going to use the left or right hand ejection option? Yeah, I mean, I would say that it would obviously it's valuable for left-handed shooters. For a military. Well, but even to for, accommodate. All for right, but even shooters. even for a civilian shooter, if I say that I want a rifle that's going to eject left yeah. side opposed to right side, like I can know that this one will allow me to do either. For a bullpup especially, mm -hmm. but for a... Yeah, it's not as relevant. I agree with you, yes. So, it's cool. It absolutely is phenomenal how they were able to engineer it. But whether or not there is relevancy to all of the engineering marvels is yeah. up to the end user. So, so, to me, as an enthusiast, I like it. I think it's cool. I think it's got a lot of engineering cool points. It's very lightweight. Barrel detaches and quick reattaches with no loss of zero all of that like just makes me tingle mm -hmm. as an enthusiast right but as a practical shooter does this serve me better than a budget ar i don't know that's a question you have to ask yourself yeah. so i think i think it's cool as an enthusiast um it's obviously a very well used and liked military rifle that the Italian army uses. Yeah. It's seen warfare in Afghanistan. But is it for you? Give it a give it a go if you can. I think it I think it's a cool rifle. I think it's a secondary it's a cool secondary collection rifle, yeah. in my opinion. It's a good way to put it. Yeah. So cool. See you in the next one.
Subscribe to our newsletter at slateblackindustries.com where you can get updates on Nine Hole Review publications and access the Practical Accuracy Scoreboard to help you argue with people on the internet on which rifle performs better on the Practical Accuracy course. We maintain this newsletter to be majority gun content with Nine Hole Review's updates per every email with less than 33% marketing content. Subscribe today on slateblackindustries.com. 916, this is 096, 4 Vic, 8 Packs, Red Con 1, Green and Green, top copy, over. 096, this is 716, Roger, over. 916, 091, 1 Pack, Green and Green, over. 7 Roger, over. 1 Vic, 2, 1 Vic, 2 Packs, Red Con 1, over.